Hey guys, today I was out in the forest again and I was coming up this hill and I thought, you know what, it's time to give you a review on this Dobinson suspension. We've been on it for years, we've seen cars on it for years. I'm going to tell you what's in this one and give you some feedback on how it's worked and all the pros and cons, what we do and don't like about it. Okay, so hopefully you can hear me okay. In the front here, we've got the Dobinson's monotube IMS, I don't even have the exact part number, they're most likely the 700s in the front, but the monotubes is the key thing, right? So, first bit of feedback, we're also going to include a little bit about the, um, the spring selection and why you don't want to be too high, and just quickly, you'll see the stance of this vehicle, most people see it on flat ground and they think, oh, it's low at the front and it's high at the back, it's all for a reason. The vehicle's not even loaded at the moment for a trip, and you can see parked on this going up a typical track. This is not the steepest hill. Uh, it's not flat. It is uh, quite an incline. If it was wet, you'd probably have a bit of fun. There's some deep ruts. You know, you can see just that side of the vehicle. There's some deep ruts. But anyway, up the front here, we've got the monotubes, not remote reservoir. Now, this is not my recommendation or not recommendation. I give you the information if you want it you can get it. If you don't want it, you don't get it. If you want to buy it off Dobinson's and think they're the best at selecting the right springs and what you need for your vehicle, and they've given you all this information, buy it from them. If you want to support me and get a kit, no problem. I'm easy either way, guys, so it's all good. There's other brands that are okay as well. Whatever you want to do, do your research. Just giving you some feedback on this Dobinson's monotube. At the front, we've had them in the 120 Prado now for, I don't know, a few years. Uh, I told you the story, I'm not going to go into that. Check out the other suspension videos in our playlist. And of course, there could be more suspension feedback on our 4 Before Touring Australia group um, channel on Facebook. Um, but the monotubes without the remote reservoir for reliability. I'm not saying I'm a fan of remote reservoirs. I've never, well, until a couple of weeks ago, I'd never sold a set of remote reservoirs to anyone. And he wanted them. And it was because he wanted the adjustables, MRA. So not just remote reservoir, remote reservoir adjustable. Monotube remote adjustable is what MRA stands for. This vehicle, just monotubes in the front up here. Let's keep it simple. I'm going to be honest with you. This is the most glorious ride, you know, if that's the right word. You know, I drive in this vehicle on the road, on dirt roads. Tell you, I shouldn't tell you this, but I haven't even let the tyres down today yet, okay? So it's not wet, it's not sloppy, I'm looking for trouble, but usually my go-to's, you know, somewhere in the 20, mid-20s, give or take, depending on the track conditions, and today I haven't even let the tyres down yet, because I'm going, I'm driving the car on the blacktop, I'm going, this is just, the word glorious came to my mind, just absolutely awesome, you just want to keep driving, you just want to keep driving the vehicle, so obviously a 150 Prado, whether it's last or the best 2015, you know, I'm not, this is not about the engine and the transmission software. It just rides great on the road. It handles well. There's no adjustment on the front other than the height. So if you're not happy with the height, you can, um, if you've got the spanners that come with the um, shocks, make sure you keep those, the struts, the, uh, the coilovers, whatever you want to call them. The ride is absolutely awesome. Comfortable and controlled ride. We've tested them in a lot of corrugations um, and they don't fade. They keep up to the task. That's the good part about them. Um, they cost a little bit more than the twin tubes. We haven't had twin tubes in our cars for years now. I still like the twin tubes, particularly the rear. I've talked about that for reliability. If you do cop a lot of rocks and you're up and down a lot of dirt roads, I'm not saying there's going to be a problem with the monotubes, but I haven't run monotubes. They're upside down. They've got a rubber boot. I haven't run them up and down a corrugated road. Perhaps someone in the comments can let us know. They live out in the outback on a dirt road and they're up and down 50 k's of dirt road all day, every day, and they've had them in for years. Let us know the feedback. Now we know of at least one person, there's been a couple that have had problems with the remote reservoir. They were early staff. There was maybe a few leaks, maybe some O-rings. So I think they, there's always, this is the thing. That's why I always, I haven't even recommend, I'm not even recommending them now. Certainly would have not recommended them then. So in my opinion, stay away from the remote reservoir stuff for now. And the reason is because let's go to the rear now. So we've covered the front, it's comfortable. This is a 150 Prado. It's got some 120 springs in it. Why? Because it hasn't got a bull bar, hasn't got a lot of weight at the front. So we're gonna put the right springs for the vehicle. Some 120s, we're gonna put 150 springs when they're really heavy at the front, right? Okay, so 
monotubes at the front really happy with the rod the control i really can't fault them in this vehicle absolutely fantastic i really you know can i speak any more highly of anything now I, i'm sure there's other good products out there i drive a lot of prados okay this is the most comfortable vehicle i've ever driven i'm telling you i've been on trips longer trips um you just want to keep driving it okay now moving to the rear we've got the monotube remote adjustable in there and we're using the 327 spring it's the most uh common if you like it's the medium spring it goes into at least 90 percent of 120 and 150 prados with the Dombertons kit um the spring's good it holds the the height of the vehicle up really well particularly if it hasn't got too much load in there if you get heavy you're going to need the 329 if you've got a lot of stuff in the back constant weight roof racks heavy duty side steps and a rear bar definitely a 329 right so just go straight to the 329s you know you might even need other springs and further assistance if you get too heavy so again the ride awesome but it can be really bad and i told you i'm going to tell you the pros and cons right so um Basically, there's three adjustments, right? People that know about suspension know what I'm talking about. I can't explain the full detail of how to adjust it in this video. That'll be another video later, so don't forget to subscribe, turn the bell on, and keep an eye out. And we've probably got a playlist called Dobinson Suspension, suspension-related stuff, and this sort of video will go into there. So there's three adjustments, right? On this particular one at the rear, the uh, rebound adjustment is a screw on the bottom of the shock so basically to adjust that you would need to get on the ground at the back of the vehicle down here to throw a tap down or get dirty get a flat blade screwdriver you can just lift up the boot you don't need a zip tie at the bottom lift up the boot a little bit and turn it with a flat blade click click not hard to do but you do need to get on the ground so understand that you've got two more adjustment adjustments for compression high speed and low speed compression now it's not about the speed of the vehicle it's about the speed of the movement of the shock okay now, if you're not into understanding things and toys and playing with things and <coughs> lots of tweaking until you're happy with the ride and the handling, and it may change different conditions, you might want to give it a couple of clicks here and a couple of clicks there. It's a good fun toy if you like that, okay? We've got it on there, okay? That doesn't mean I'm, I'm saying do as I say, not as I do, right? So for the people that love it, they've had dirt bikes, they like a good value for money. They're about 500 bucks a corner, so they're not cheap. Uh... They're, it doesn't mean because they're dearer they're going to last longer suspension like tires and brakes wear and tear items they might be rebuildable but take it into account right australian labor price and parts price and you know what often it's not worth it so you're going to run them for a few years if you use them off-road and you're going to change them put a new set in or if you're handy on the tools you might rebuild them yourself and get the parts that sort of thing so if you're into that they may be for you okay now with the adjustment, obviously, as I said, the high and the low speed compression. The high speed, obviously, is those fast shaft movements, you know, up and down. The things like, fast things like going over speed humps, right? If you've got deep corrugations or whoopies on tracks or, you know, on the sand or whatever, you need your suspension to be able to move fast. It needs to compress fast to get comfort and keep your wheels on the ground. And it needs to rebound just as fast as well. Now... Having too much or not enough of these adjustments can affect on-road handling as well, right? So you can make it really awesome for those conditions and then you hit the blacktop again and you go around a bend and you're going, oh, whoa, what's going on here? So you need to bring it back the other way. So you can either set it to a happy medium, which is pretty much where we're at. If we're doing a long trip of certain conditions, we can, you know, a couple of clicks either way. But it's important that you do the rebound and the compression. They need to sort of match each other because if you do too much compression, not enough rebound, uh, literally, right, you know, well, it's going to pack up because your compression's firm and your rebound's coming out fast. So the suspension's going to pack up. It's going to be near the top. And the opposite, if you've got too much of the other and not enough of the other, it will pack down, right? If you have not enough, if you've got it um, not enough rebound or too much rebound, allowing more flow and the rebound happens fast, that your shockers can top out going downhill. So that's the other thing to think about with too much height at the rear once you're going downhill look the way the vehicle is now the weight's on the rear because the vehicle's facing up the hill when it's coming down the hill all the weight's on the front well not all you know again wrong word used but the rear is extended and you're dropping off rocks and rock steps the shock tends to fully extend so that's where you need to have maybe a little bit less rebound to control that a little bit or a little bit more uh, a little bit less Co compression anyway i'm going to get it all wrong i said this video isn't about how to adjust it 
but the point is it can be a real pain okay so if you know what you're doing and you want it awesome get the mras in there you can get them front and rear if you like my my idea is well at the front you've got your set weight it's not going to change their valve well you don't need to change them the problem is the rear this is a jx it's nice and light with nothing in it um obviously it on loose dirt roads it could tend to skip around a little bit depending on your settings and obviously when you load it up it's totally different so you filled up the back of the car the roof the family or put your trailer on your camper on whatever it's going to handle totally different so it's good to be able to adjust the rear valving you know compression rebound to suit the conditions and the load of the vehicle so it is good to be able to do that but it's also complicated for people that don't get it and i'm not saying i'm the best at it i'm not the expert on it i understand it but i'll tell you what there's that many different handling characteristics and things that can happen when you've got it wrong you've got to stop and think hey uh, and again the experts yep jim or whoever that tells us you're an expert maybe you are maybe you're not but anyway um <laughs> jim john or you know mark or harry or whoever right doesn't matter i'm just throwing names out there right um so the dobinson's mono tubes we really like it okay if you're not using it on the tracks and you just want to get a bit of a lift and you're sort of doing a day trip here or there and you're mainly after the height the cheapest end of the budget is the twin tubes right so you know you're down around 13 20 to your door for a kit delivered to your door that's where the front's assembled you know depending where you are in australia this is sort of east coast prices let's say west coast probably add another 50 or 100 if you've got a spring compressor or you're taking it to a uh, mechanic or a technician to install it you don't need the fronts assembled that's just going to cost you strut tops or top hats and labor unnecessarily they can do that as part of the install reusing the top hat so you buy the kit without the assembly at the front to make it a little bit more work for them not much really but save you the money on the top hats which are yeah 66 bucks each plus you're going to pay labor separately doing it all together you know they're not going to charge it's going to be a few bucks extra fitting the kit to do the compressing the front springs and reusing the top hat right so hopefully you understand that and it saves you a few bucks as well we were saying you know the combination monotubes at the front twin tubes at the rear that's been good a lot of people have done that now a lot of people are insisting and in going for monotubes all around because they've got the ocd thing and that's fine so they've got standard monotubes at the front and also monotubes at the rear without the remote reservoir a lot of people very happy with that so we're quite happy to say if you want to do that you know that just to give you an idea it's about 1760 bucks delivered to your door with the fronts assembled bang you know again east coast prices and of course the combination somewhere in between probably about 1540 they're your approximate prices if you're interested remember to me monday mornings from 8 a.m send me a text message a photo is good this is the vehicle that will help us select the springs if we can do that in the text messages we'll do that as well if there needs to be a phone call about spring selection after you've selected what struts what shockers whether you want assembled or not in your message we get an exact price we need your suburb and your postcode i'll give you an exact price it's probably going to be one of those prices give or take uh you pay for it and if need be i'll give you a call have a five minute chat about what you've got on the front the rear of the vehicle and what you know what you want out of it whether you're happy with a bit of a firmer ride whatever so but again it's not about me i'm here to help if you want that advice and that suspension if you want to get something else and go somewhere else that's fine bada bing i think that's it we've covered it haven't we 327s in the back just about every prado takes those there's nothing wrong with the comfort of the 327s there's nothing wrong with the comfort of any of the rear shockers in the dobinson's range unless you've got mras and you've got everything set wound up too tight uh, and the handling could be terrible then as well so it can go really wrong if you don't know what you're doing uh, it can be dangerous i'll tell you straight it can be dangerous if you don't know how to adjust suspension um, don't do it just get your standard monotubes or twin tubes or combination not adjustable I think we've nailed it haven't we i just want to say one more thing so i started at the start saying the level of the vehicle right it sits it looks like it's about level right? this is what i'm talking about on flat ground the front it's pretty low it's only got about an inch lift that's all we want because we're preparing for a load and see what happens here notice that's where your axle is right that's where your back seats are that's where your cargo barrier is. so all the load you put in all the weight's going to be there and notice it's on the back half of the axle so that's going to put the back down a lot and even pop the front pop and monos a little bit you know what i mean plus then you've got tracks like this so keep it in mind some people are worried about having it oh it's high at the back i want to level it out more the hilux guys you know because they've got a bigger rake sort of thing because they're built for more load guys it's for load so that when you load it up or you know it levels out like this now the problem with coming down the hill the front then you're going to say well it's too low and the back's too high that is true a little bit right a little bit it's true but 
That's why you've got a bash plate, kaon.com.au, right? So you, all you're gonna, you're not gonna get bogged going down a steep hill. Yeah, you might hit your bash plate a bit because the front's independent suspension. It's bouncing as you come down the hill. Just slow it down a bit, okay? Slow down, right? I'm not saying go super low. Depends what you want. It's this vehicle is set up for touring. We're gonna have another video reviewing this vehicle setup, the what mods we've done and why, and that'll be on our touring channel. So if you want to watch that. For before touring Australia, that'll be coming out soon as well. It might even be out before this video. Guys, that's a butter bing, butter boom. Everything I can tell you about, we are so happy with this suspension. We've had no issues with leaks. Uh, these have only been on for about, what is it, just under 18 months. In the 120, we've got remote reservoirs at the rear. We, you know, it was more of a test fit the brackets. You know what I mean? We want to see how they fit it up in case anyone wanted them. If they ask them, if they want them installed so we know what we're looking at. Um, there's no major leaks or failures, but there is a slight sweat at the passenger side rear, possibly one of the O-rings where the host see more moving parts. But it's it's never been worked on, adjusted, and it's not bad enough that I think it needs to be. It was like that, I'd guess, from six months in, I noticed it, and it's been like that since 2018, I think they went in, so about three years now. Hasn't changed, okay? So uh, soon enough, we'll be putting something else in to freshen it up. It's probably about time to freshen up the suspension in the 120 there's nothing wrong with it there you go there's some cheap suspension for anyone that wants a set of monotubes at the front of the 120 and a set of monotube remote reservoir and the brackets and everything from the rear um so if you're interested in suspension just text me if you're interested in the stuff that's coming out of the 120 that's cheaper let me know it may or may not suit your needs can't guarantee reliability there's no warranty it's used three years it's not a problem we're just going to freshen up that's what we do just like we freshen up tires on the one. I'm getting off topic now, but they're about three years old as well. Time to go back to some KO2s for off-road. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Please give us a thumbs up. I hope that helped you with your suspension, and I hope that helps. It's not just about Prados or Hiluxes, whatever. It's They're available from Dobinsons for other makes and models, which, of course, you can just go direct to Dobinsons for them, unfortunately. Uh, one-man army, we'll call it. You know, we've got a few helpers here and there, but one-man army, we can only do what we can do. And we don't want to get big and famous and whatever. That's why you're looking at the car, not me. Just here to help, guys. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up. Please subscribe. Turn the bell on. More genuine information coming your way. See ya.